And so next week we go to Haiti with the message of hope. Flying into Haiti, Pastor Boykin prepares his notes for the message he is set to deliver to the youth of Haiti. As the plane begins its descent, there is a collective agreement that God is about to do something special. Arriving in Port-au-Prince, Pastor Boykin began his agenda with Haiti's youth leaders. During the meetings, details were finalized regarding the weekend's activities. I believe the window of opportunity for this country is open today, right now. Haitian students from destroyed universities in Port-au-Prince and from campuses across the United States joined together with one purpose, the building of a stronger Haiti through Jesus Christ. The students were united in their resolve to remain in Haiti until their goals become a reality. Because you will make Haiti a better place for yourself as well as the next generation. Disappointed with their country's current leadership, Haiti's young people are determined to make a difference at the polls, one that favors a new Haiti, reflecting Christian values and democracy at its foundation. Pastor Boykin was introduced to the Haitian population by national television personalities during an interview seen throughout the nation. Pastor Mark Boykin, it's a pleasure for us to have you with us uh, this morning. What is the purpose of your visit in I'm here just to follow up on what Barbara said uh, for the march tomorrow. You've been angry at your country. Have you ever been angry at your God? Have you ever been so angry that you can't see what you've got? As a tribute to the 250,000 victims of January's earthquake, a tree planting ceremony was held alongside the mass grave site where those who perished were buried. Over 12 busloads of young people arrived for this event, as well as dignitaries and missionaries from several other countries. The planting of the 2,500 trees symbolized a new covenant of change among the Haitian people. Pastor Boykin addressed the crowd, encouraging and challenging the next generation of Haitians with the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's a spirit of transformation that is crossing this country. And it is a spirit of action and change. Pastor Boykin's vision was planted in the soil of hope and commitment alongside Haitian brothers and sisters. The march in downtown Port-au-Prince began in the midst of chaos as the Haitian government disrupted the start. But things brightened and Pastor Boykin was able to deliver a message of hope and restoration. Thank you, Pastor Chevon. And it's good to be back in Haiti with you. And it's exciting to see so many young people on this historic day. Bringing 23 minutes of impassioned preaching, Pastor Boykin referenced the book of Ezekiel. The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord took Ezekiel to a valley. It was the valley of death of devastation and dry bones. But the Lord did not direct his attention just to the dry bones. Today we cannot just look at the devastation around us. The Spirit of the Lord said to him, Can these bones live again? And I want to ask you today, Can this nation live again? As shouts filled the audience, Pastor Boykin continued his message stating, to rebuild Haiti, the young people first need to plant the vision in their hearts. The next generation of Haitians cannot be satisfied with the status quo, accepting such things as illiteracy and unemployment. When God blesses the country, he blesses everyone. Money alone cannot restore the dream, only God. God is looking for a new generation and you are that generation. 
It is time for real change in Haiti, one that embraces Jesus Christ and trusts that through him, Haiti's future is guaranteed through the Word of God. Church of All Nations continues to make a difference, a difference Christ commands for the lives of those less fortunate. The soil has been turned, the trees planted, and the vision of a new Haiti has been firmly set in the minds and hearts of the Haitian people. Yet Haiti is still a country struggling to its feet. Long-term commitment is key. Your prayers and financial support will play a role as will trips such as this. Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised.